Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you so much for coming and joining us tonight. We're very, very excited about our service and about the hearing our friend speak and tell, tell us about his impressions of the night of Kristallnacht, which where he was actually a witness as a young child. And we'd like to start off with warming up with a couple of songs. I'd like to do a song called Aniviata, which although it's I and you, but we often in English we usually say you and I, but um, it's, we have words on page 652. <clears throat> it's a song that's very popular in Israel and um, also done quite a bit here. there but it's not a it's a more literal translation but it's not really meant to be sung so I'll sure if this is in the book it's Yeah. 
have to give. Page 677. 677. Six, 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 Let's start from the top. Open up our eyes, teach us how to live, fill our hearts with joy and all the love you have to give. Gather us in peace as you lead us to your name, and we will know that. Open up our eyes, teach us how to live, fill our hearts with joy and all the love you have to give. Gather us in peace as you lead us to your name, and we will know that. Shalom again. I would like to invite Ismay and Lily to come on up and open the doors of the Ark and the Ark Curtain. If that's okay with you. Please rise in body or spirit. Please be seated. And we'll continue now with the lighting of the Shabbat candles on page 120 and 121. I'd like to invite Shalva to come on up to light the candles for us this evening in honor of her sponsoring the Oneg Shabbat. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו, וציוונו להדליק נר של שבת. אמן.
And now that we've lit the lights of Shabbat, we continue as we welcome the Shabbat bride with the singing of L'Chad Odi, which you may find on pages 138 and 139. Get your shakers ready for this one. And now we'll continue with the Baruch the next section of our service on page 146. We rise in body or spirit. Praise Adonai, to whom praise is due forever. Praise be Adonai, to whom praise is due now and forever. Baruch Hu et Adonai, Hamavorah. Baruch Adonai, Hamavorah. Leolam Vaed. Page 148. Baruch Ata Adonai. Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher b'varo ma'ari varavim, b'chokma poteach sh'arim, u'vidvuna mishane itim, u'machalit et hazmanim, u'msader et ha'kochavim, b'mishmerotehem barakia kirtsono, b'orei yom v'laila, golel or mipnei choshech, Vachoshech mipnei or, Uma avir yom ume bi laila, Uma avdil bin yom ube laila, 
Adonai Tzvaot Shemo. El Chai V'Kayam Tamid Yimloch Aleinu Olam Ba'ed. Baruch Ata Adonai Hama'ari Aravim. Ever living God, may you reign continually over us unto eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai, who brings on the evening. Page 150. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. Blessed is God's glorious majesty forever and ever. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem, Kevod Mahuto, Leolam Ha'ed. You may be seated. Please join me on page 154, the chanting of the Via Havta. Via Havta, hey, Adonai Elohecha, Bechol Levacha, Uchol Nafshecha, Uchol Meodecha, Behayu. Advarim ha ele, Asher anohi mitzacha ha yom al vabecha, Vishinantaham levanecha, Vidibarta ha bam, Vishitaka ha vetecha, Uvlechtaka ha vadere, Uvshakpaka ha uvkumecha, Uksharkam the old al yadecha, Vihayu litotapod, Ben enecha. Uchtaptaham al mizuzot beteka uvisha recha lima antis keruhu va asitem et kol mitzvotai vitem kedoshim lelohechem ani adonai elohechem asher hotzehiti etem me eretz mitzrayim liot lachem lelohim. Ani Adonai Elohechem. Together, you shall love Adonai your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Take to heart these instructions with which I charge you this day. Impress them upon your children. 
Recite them when you stay at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you get up. Bind them as a sign on your hand and let them serve as a symbol on your forehead. Inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Thus you shall remember to observe all my commandments and to be holy to your God. I am Adonai, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am Adonai, your God, Adonai, Elohechem, Emet. Now continue with the singing of Micha Mocha on page 158, the song the Israelites sang when they crossed the Red Sea to freedom from Pharaoh's grip. <laughs> Mi kamocha ba elim adonai, mi kamocha nedar ba kodesh. Mi kamocha ba elim adonai, mi kamocha nedar ba kodesh. No rate ilo, ote tele. No rate ilo, ote tele adonai. Jacob from a hand stronger than his own. Praise to you, Adonai, for redeeming Israel. Baruch Ata Adonai Ba'al Yisrael. Continue on page 160 with the singing of Hashkivenu. This is a particularly important prayer for us this week. We think of all of those who need a shelter of peace spread around them. Our country needs it. The state of Israel needs it. The Middle East needs it. Uh, people in Ukraine need it. Uh, so many people around the world really are yearning for God to provide us with some safety and comfort this particular Shabbat. <laughs> The Hamidinu Shomre Lichayim Hashkibinu Adonai Eloinu Lishalom The Hamidinu Shomre Lichayim Ushmol Zeteinu Uvoeinu Lichayim Shalom, may I be adored. Ashkivenu Adonai, Eloheinu le Shalom, ve Hamidenu Shomreinu le Chayim. Ashkivenu Adonai, Eloheinu le Shalom, ve Hamidenu Shomreinu le Chayim. Top of page 161 together. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. Adonai, help us to walk with good companions, to live with hope in our hearts and eternity in our thoughts, that we may lie down in peace and rise up waiting to do your will. Baruch Ata Adonai, Haporei Sukkot Shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol amo Yisrael de'al Yerushalayim. Now we continue with the Shamru on page 162. The people of Israel shall keep Shabbat, observing Shabbat throughout the ages as a covenant for all time. 
Shabbat vayina fash, Shabbat vayina fash, Shabbat vayina fash. the next section of our service and body your spirit on page 164. Ananananananana Adonai Ananananananavatantita Ananananananana Ufiyagi Ufiyagi Adonai Eloheinu Elohe Avotenu Imotehinu Elohe Abraham Elohe Yitzhak Elohe Yaakov Elohe Sarah Elohe Rivka Elohe Rachel Elohe Leah Ahel Agadol Hagibor Hanora El El Yohon Romer Chasadim Tovim Ekanehe Hakol וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות, ומביא גאולה לבני בניהם, למען שמו ואהבה. מלך עוזה ומושיע ומגן, ברוך אתה אדוני, מגן אברהם ועזרת שרה. פייג' 168. אתה גיבור לעולם אדוני, מחיי הכל אתה רב להושיע, מחלקי חיים בחסד, 
Mechaye ha kol de rachamim rabim, Sachome no hofin de rofe holim, Umati rasurim, Umkaye emunato, Lishene afar, Micha mocha baal givurot, Umido melach, Melech me mi, Umkaye. Who marks me at Yeshua? Then the Eman at Tale Hakayot Akol. Barukata Adonai, Mechaye Akol. Page 170. Ata Kadosh, Vishim Hakadosh, Ukidoshim Behold Yom, Yahalu Kasela. Barukata Adonai. I'd like to invite Shalva up as we continue with a special prayer for the state of Israel, which you may find on page 552. Avinu Shiva Shamayim, Tzur Yisrael Vegoalo. ברך את מדינת ישראל, ראשית צמיחת גאולתנו, הגן עליה בעברת חסדיך, ופרוס עליה סוכת שלומך, ושלח אורך ואמיתך לראשיה, שריה ויועציה, ותקנם בעצה טובה מלפניך, ונתת שלום בארץ, ושמחת עולם ליושביה, ונאמר אמן. O Heavenly One, Protector and Redeemer of Israel, bless the state of Israel, which marks the dawning of hope for all who seek peace. Shield it beneath the wings of your love, spread over it the canopy of your peace. Send your light and truth to all who lead and advise, guiding them with your good counsel. Establish peace in the land and fullness of joy for all who dwell there. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Continue on page 178 with the singing of Shalom Rav, a song for peace. <laughs> Blessed are you, Adonai, who blesses your people Israel with peace. Baruch Ata Adonai, Ambarech et Amo Yisrael, HaShalom. 
Continue with a special prayer for the welfare and return of Israel's captured and missing from among our brothers and sisters. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rivka, Yaakov, Leah and Rachel, may God bless the captured and the many kidnapped citizens, men, women, and young children, all held in painful captivity still in Gaza among them, along with all who are in captivity and distress. May it be your will, Adonai Tzvaot, God of hosts, to rescue and redeem these souls and return them swiftly to their families in the land of Israel. As it is written, thus said God, a cry is heard in Ramah, wailing, bitter weeping, Rachel weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted. And now we continue with the Misha Beira, Get Well Prayer, which you may find on page 371. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal those who are ill. We think in particular this evening of Michael Nussbaum, Larry Kornetsky, Sheldon Cooperman. And at this time, if there are names of others you'd like us to keep in our hearts and our minds, we prepare to recite the Misha Berach, Get Well Prayer. We add those who are suffering in the state of Israel, those who are suffering around the state of Israel, those who are suffering in our country, those who are suffering in Ukraine, those in particular who are suffering, who don't know what the future may bring. And uh, there are other names you may like to mention in particular. You may say them as I look across the room. James Melinda Johnson. P.B. Goodman and Edmund Boudreaux. May the Blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for their health to be restored and their strength to be revived. May God swiftly send all of them and all of us a complete renewal of body and spirit. And let us say, Amen. 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 May the source of strength who blessed the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Bless those in need of healing with Rafua Shlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say. for a moment of silent prayer. <clears throat> now we continue with those say Shalom, another song for peace at the bottom of page 180. Oh, say shalom, then Roma, so ya have shalom, Ali. We are called Israel, the Hindu, the Hindu, Ali. Oh, say shalom, then Roma, so ya have shalom.
is called Lech Lecha, which means get thee out, and it's the beginning of Abram and Sarah, Sarai's journey after they have to leave from their father's house. And we can only imagine the turmoil which took place before they had, which caused them to leave. And, and uh, the Torah tells us that there are 10 times that God presents horrible, horrible challenges to them which they have to overcome in order to uh, continue on their way and, and survive. Maybe we could have all the kids go out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, so, so, that's, so that's the story of this week's Torah portion. And, and the question is, what is Lech Lecha? Why does it say Lech Lecha? And the rabbis tell us that uh, it, it, the, the reason why the word is repeated is because you have to start by uh, looking within to, to, to move yourself forward before you can move anybody else forward. So, so the reason why that's really relevant to us today is that we have to think about what we need to do for ourselves to move ourselves forward, no matter what crisis is facing us in this country or anywhere, we start within ourselves. What can we do to move ourselves to a better place? And what can we do to move ourselves down the next, the next steps down our journey as a people, as a country, uh, as, as a worldwide civilization, and and so, and so this this week's Torah portion really gives us hope that Av Avram and Sarai were able to overcome their own personal tests, and they were able to overcome all the tests that were facing them as a couple, and they survived. We survived horrible things throughout history, and so it gives us hope that we can survive whatever is facing up us at this moment to continue down and be stronger, better people and, and have more of a chance to, to build ourselves and to help us build others and, and to, uh, to, to commit to tikkun olam, making the world a better place. And so we are so fortunate tonight to have a witness to the beginning of, of the, our, the worst challenge in our people's lives in this past last century. Uh, Werner Salinger uh, is, Probably not, there are not too many people left who remember the events of Kristallnacht in, uh, on November 9th, 8th and 9th of 1939. And he has been working, he's been talking to people around the country, uh, all over the schools, and, and just telling them his story of what he saw and what he witnessed in order to, for us. And, and he, I'm so glad he's with us this evening to keep the story alive, to help us understand what he endured what the people in Germany and Berlin endured at that moment, and so that we can internalize that story and, and help to keep it from happening again. So, Warner, it's a privilege and an honor to have you here. Come on up. And maybe if we can move the kids away from the door to a, a place that's quieter. <laughs> Right here. Okay. Thank you. Well, Rabbi Susan and Cantor, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And the same to you all out there, Shabbat Shalom. 86 years. That's what it is today. 86 years. And 86 years ago, on the night of 8 November, was the very first. Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass. And I lived, I was six years old at the time. 
didn't know very much about what was going on. But I lived right in the middle of Berlin. My mother was a, one of the world's first orthodontists, so we had a fairly large apartment because her practice was also in, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Because her practice was also in the apartment. My dad was a lawyer. Um, I'm going to differ with the, the rabbi that this commemoration of Crystal Night number one, 86 years ago, was the beginning of the Holocaust. For me, the beginning of the Holocaust was the 15th of September, 1935. I was three at the time. Anybody know what happened on the 15th of September, 1935, in the new Nazi government? Remember, Hitler was appointed. I was born in April, 1932. 10 weeks later, Hitler was appointed chancellor by the then president of Germany, uh, Paul von, von Ribbentrop, and uh, the very first thing he did was appoint a committee to study how to write the best possible racial laws that the Nazis could come up with. And so he put, brought together about a dozen people, they were all men at the time, and he sent them overseas, and the first country they went to was the United States of America because we had some pretty nasty racial laws. We had Jim Crow, of course. We had the Asian Exclusionary Act also, of course. And so they came here. Three of them went back home and wrote books about it. And the new Nazi parliament coded the laws that became known as the Nuremberg Laws. And overnight, me, I, I had been going to kindergarten. I was three years old at the time. And uh, immediately, one day I was a citizen of Germany, the son of the citizens of Germany, and the next morning I was not. Because anyone of Jewish descent was no longer considered a German citizen. How did that affect me at the time? I had to immediately change kindergarten. I could no longer go to school or kindergarten with children who were not Jewish or said conversely I could only go to kindergarten with children who were Jewish, no longer non-Jewish uh, children. How did it affect my parents? They, no, they could no longer have patients who were not Jewish or clients for my dad, the lawyer, who were not Jewish and that all happened overnight. One day you were a citizen and the next morning you were not. That for me was the beginning of the Holocaust. Kristallnacht just Increase it. What do I remember from Kristallnacht? We lived right in the middle of Berlin, second story. Had a great look. If you've ever been to Berlin, Ulanstrasse and corner Ulanstrasse and Kurfürstendamm, very important corner in uh, downtown Berlin. I had a great perch to see what was going on in the street just outside of our uh, second floor apartment. I could see the shattered glass, I could hear the shattered glass, I could see bodies in the street, but the most lingering memory I have of that night is the dark, black, acrid smoke coming from the synagogue one block away that the Nazis had ordered, like all synagogues, not just in Berlin, but throughout the country, had ordered, burned to the ground and had ordered the fire departments not to extinguish the blazes, but to let the houses of worship, Jewish synagogues, burn to the ground. There was one exception to that in Berlin, the Oranienburg Synagogue, uh, very massive, very architecturally beautiful building, beautifully restored after the war. But that synagogue that night was saved by a very courageous fire captain who refused to follow the Nazi orders to let the synagogue burn and did all he could to douse the flames. And he was successful, although later during the war and the bombings, the synagogue was heavily damaged. After the war, it was restored. We left uh, Germany. We had a visa to come to the United States. We left Berlin on the 12th of January, 1939. 
arrived in New York on the 12th of February, 1939. Unfortunately, my mother, who was only 35 at the time, contracted tuberculosis on the ship on the way over and died within 10 months. She never was able to practice her uh, prof medical profession again, and my father never practiced law again either. To me, my mother was the first victim of the Holocaust, and uh, I was, let's see, 40, I was seven, I think, at the, at the time. My dad remarried another German Jewish refugee woman who uh, was from Munich, and my mother had been from Freiburg, Germany. Uh, my stepmother, Bella, had two parents who survived the war, survived two concentration camps, Dachau and Theresienstadt, and then came to live with us after, uh, uh, in 1946. They had survived both Dachau and Theresienstadt, but came to live with us. And every, anything I, I knew personally about the camps, uh, I learned from them when they came to uh, live with us. One massive event took place on the 12th of January, 1942. I, of course, was no longer in Germany at the time. Anybody know what that might have been? It's called the Wannsee Conference. And it was organized by Reinhard Heydrich, a very senior SS officer. Um, he brought together, again, about a dozen high-ranking Nazi people, all men. And they discussed in one day, in one day, in the villa on the shores of Lake Wannsee, just outside of Berlin, how to kill not six million, but 11 million Jews. They had taken very, a very careful uh, census of the Jewish population in both the lands that, that the Nazis had already conquered and also in the more Eastern European countries and the countries that they still had planned to conquer. And in one day, with coffee and cognac breaks in between, they discussed how to kill not six million, but 11 million Jews. If there's anything fortunate in that history, it's that they never reached their goal because the war ended and they had only been able to kill six million. The two major concerns that they had on that day, as they discussed how to kill 11 million people, were number one, the logistics of getting 11 million people to the killing sites, and how you could possibly kill 11 million people quickly enough to actually be able to do it. That was one major concern. The second major concern was what psychological effect would it possibly have on the German soldiers ordered to do the killing. Those were their two major concerns as they discussed in an eight-hour meeting how to kill 11 million people. So I went back to Germany in 1951 this time I was wearing U.S. Air Force blue. I was an Air Force intelligence officer in Germany for almost four years. And I have to say, the children of the Germans who were the Nazis thought all this out, produced the gas for the gas chambers and the bullets for the guns. The children and the grandchildren of those people, by and large, have done a pretty decent job, if there could possibly be a decent job, in atoning uh, for the Holocaust deaths. Um, I've been to Germany many times, actually have a uh, German wife. Um, if you've been to Germany, you've probably seen the many memorials to the Holocaust and the many ways that some very decent German people have tried to atone for the, whole, for the Holocaust. I never lost the smell. I could smell the smoke 
tonight. I could smell it anywhere and everywhere of the synagogue burning on Fasanenstrasse, which was just one block away from where we lived. Um, they're not good memories, but I did live them. So, Cantor and Rabbi, thank you for inviting me to be here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank can you can so people much. ask you a couple of questions? Sure, yeah. I, I mean, I wanted to start off by asking um, what was going through your head? Do you remember what was going through your head when you, saw, when you looked out the window and you saw all of this happening? And do you remember how you felt? Good question, yeah. Yeah, I do remember how I felt. I, I didn't really know what was going on. My, my parents, who were both at home at the time, uh, tried to explain to me. They, of course, tried to shield me from the, from the facts that uh, anyone who, who had, was, well, at that time, they weren't yet wearing the Jewish star. But uh, it was pretty plain um, because non-Jewish people uh, picked on the Jewish people on the street, pushed them. So I, it, was, it was a very unusual event, and I knew it was a very unusual event. Didn't quite know why. Um, but we were lucky, you know, we were able to, we had a visa, and it was much harder to get an affidavit of support from an American citizen. You, you can't come to this country or any other country, pretty much, uh, just with a visa. You have to have citizens of, of that country explain uh, by signing an affidavit of support that you will, that they will take responsibility for you and your family and uh, we had a very hard time finding that uh, there was a a Jewish man who had emigrated from Laupheim Germany when he was about 17 years old in in 1903 and he had a hard time for about 10 years then found his way into the movie industry and became the founder of Universal Studios. Carl Lemley was his name, and he was from Laupheim, which is a mid-level city in central Germany. And he made it his business when the Holocaust ratcheted up. He decided that he would help any family that had a connection to Laupheim, Germany. My mother happened to be one of five sisters, and the oldest one, Aunt, my Aunt Lily, was married to a man from Laupheim, Germany. So Carl Lemley gave them an affidavit, and when it came time for my parents to approach him, he first said no, he couldn't do this again, he had done it too many times. I had another uncle who was already in New York at the time, who said I gotta go see this guy, I gotta convince him to do this one more time. If he hadn't done that, I wouldn't be here tonight. That's how close it was. Wow, thank you. Are there other questions? Yeah. Do you, I know that you don't remember the details very well of that night, but do you know whether other friends of your family were directly affected by Chris, the events of Kristallnacht? My two best friends my age were not killed on Crystal Night, but they were killed along with their mother. I never saw them again. Uh, my own Memory of Crystal Night was just Nazi troopers pushing people they thought were Jews. Anyone who had a beard like you or me would have been first to go. Uh, the bodies that I saw on the street, I don't know if they were dead. They certainly didn't move. There were about a dozen maybe that in, in my view. Uh, that's what I remember. And, and the smoke from the Synagogue one block away. Yeah. Yeah. You said you left in January. What was it like from November to January? Well, that's a great question. Uh, as I remember the time from November to January, it was very quiet. We could no longer, I could no longer go to school uh, in normal Berlin schools. But the Jewish community, and Berlin had a very large Jewish community, several hundred thousand people. And my father always told me stories about how proud 
he was, of what the Jewish community in Berlin and in other cities as well did in terms of putting together their own orchestras and their own uh, cultural groups, theaters, and things like that. Uh, and they were able to function through that period and even further, all the way, I think, up to, until about 1942, when the Nazis put an end to it. And most of the people who belonged to those organizations, the symphony orchestras, the theater groups that performed in for Jews only theaters, most of them did not survive the war. Most of them were then shipped to the camps and killed. Uh, yeah. Martha. Um, I know you were very young, but after you arrived here in the United States, were you, did you feel safe? I, the war wasn't over, the Nazis were still expanding. I mean, did you feel safe? Did you feel not safe? Uh, do you remember any of that at that age? I do. Yeah. And I have to tell you, I, I felt very safe. And I'll tell you why. I was sent, because of my mother's TV, I was sent away to a, an uncle. I called him an uncle, wasn't really an uncle. Uh, but he was married to my father's first cousin who was Jewish. He was not. And he taught at the Princeton Theological Seminary. Um, and actually, he was a world-renowned New Testament theologian. Uh, and we lived in, me and four other refugee kids from our extended family, all lived with that family who had three kids of their own, the oldest son of which, uh, of whom was killed in uh, the US Army in the Battle of the Bulge in Europe. But in line with the question that you just asked, um, you know, Donald Trump held this uh, uh, rally a couple of weekends ago in Madison Square Garden. And he chose that site because in 1939, on the 20th of February, the American German Nazi Bund, German American Nazi Bund, held a rally there. Uh, and, and Donald Trump chose that site to show his support base, how close he was to the Hitler Holocaust uh, movement. And that really affected me because I had only been in this country from the 12th to eight days, from the 12th to the 20th. I didn't know about that rally in Madison Square Garden at the time, but in retrospect, it really was, and is strange to me, that I had just arrived in this country when that Nazi rally was held in New York City at the same spot that Donald Trump held his rally. Uh, just a few weeks ago. So my follow-up question is, do you feel safe in America now? I do. I feel safe in America now. I have uh, great faith in America, although I have to tell you, and I apologize for any political feelings I might throw out that do not agree with yours. I, I think this was not just a eked out victory. This was a landslide. Yeah. This was a landslide. And the fact that so many American voters could vote for the MAGA folks in a landslide just proved to me that America is not necessarily always the shining castle on the hill, the sh shining city on the hill that Ronald Reagan spoke about. We've got a lot of terrible stuff in our history, terrible stuff. And we'll see what happens in the next four years. I mean, we shot our way and raped our way across this country before we even ever were a country. Uh, but me personally, yeah, I felt safe. Thank you. What was it for you to go back to Germany and as an adult? And how did you experience yourself in the country that basically yeah good question uh, very strange at first I mean I, I was on a troop ship there were I think 2,000 of us and we walked off the gangplank in Bremerhaven Germany uh, as the band on the docks played I wonder who's kissing her now not a great morale booster um, and it took a while 
we, 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 this was the very height of the Cold War, 1951, two, three, four, five. Um, it, it took a lot of getting used to, and we hired Germans, most of whom were German Army veterans, uh, some of whom probably were SS veterans, uh, to help us do what we were, had to do, which was gather a lot of intelligence about the Soviet Union, with which we were all convinced that we would going, be going to war with, not tomorrow or the next day, but any minute today. Uh, and we knew not much about the Soviet Union after the Second World War, uh, so we collected a lot of intelligence from uh, German prisoners of war who were just coming back from the Soviet Union. Uh, so it took a while. I would say it took uh, almost a year for me to feel comfortable again uh, working with Germans. But three years later, I had a lot of German friends, still do. Uh, there, there's a lot of commemoration that's going on. You cut me off when I'm going too long. Uh, you know, before the war ended in 45, starting in about February, I think, uh, whoever was left alive of, of the Jewish um, concentration camp inmates, uh, the Nazis actually started to empty out the camps and put these people on what became known as death marches. Uh, they had no idea where they were marching to and, and they took weeks and months on the road. Many of them didn't make it. And today in many German cities, Every year in springtime, there are commemorative marches to commemorate those death marches. So uh, Germans pretty generally have done a lot to try to atone for the Holocaust happening. Somebody else had a, Joel, did you have a question? Okay. One more question. All right, well, well thank, you, thank you so much. Thank you so much for asking. Let's me. give him a round of applause. Thank you. Okay. One, one thing he didn't, one thing Warner didn't get into, which is another, another for another time, is that, that um, he befriended uh, Albert Einstein <laughs> when he lived in Princeton, and, and, and Einstein used to play the violin for you, right? Yeah, he did. When you were a child. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> didn't give me any of the scientific. <laughs> did you have anybody in your family playing piano with him as he played the violin? No, but I'm about to. My partner here. <laughs> Thank you very much. That gave us a lot of insight. And, and uh, after the service is over, I'm sure people can ask you specific sure. questions and more, to give us more details about what you experienced and what it was like and on all of that. So he'll be sticking around. And, and uh, 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 he's got, Warner lives in Bedford now. He just moved to Bedford, which is how I connected with him. And, and uh, he's going to be speaking tomorrow night again. You're going to have a busy week with us. Uh, at, our, at our Crystal Knock commemoration um, on Bedford Town Common, but it, uh, it, it's, it's wonderful to have you here as, a, as a, an eyewitness. In all my life in this country, I've never experienced another community that actually commemorates it, so yeah. kudos to you all for, for doing it. Thank you. So now we'll continue our service with the Elenu on page 586. Sorry, I kicked the kids out. They can come back in if they like. <laughs> Hate to do that. Please rise in body or spirit. Barack, you want to come out and open the air curtain? You want to open the air curtain? Alone, you want to open the air curtain too? <laughs> Layla, you want to open the air curtain too? <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> She's so cute. Ali. 
in the Shabbat of Adon Akol, but take it in love, he'll serve the Reishi, Shalom Hassan, Goyen and Haratzot, Loho Samanu, the Mishnah of Adama, Shalom Sam, the King of Kahem, the Goranenu, the King of Mona, Bahanaknu, Ori, Umishakadin, Umodin, So please be seated, everyone, and please join me on the top of page 588. <laughs> Emet Makenu, Ephesulato, Kakahatu, the Torahato, the Adapta Hayom, the Adapta Hayom, Hasevota, Eleva Habeta, Ki Adonai, Uha Elohim, Uha Elohim, Pashamayim, Mimaha, the Aha Ares, the Aha Ares. Me tahat ain old, ain old. Please turn to page 591. Join me in our version of Ayong Hahu, starting with Bene Emar. Bene Emar, the Haya Adonai, the Melech Alkot. We think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died at this season in years past, and those we have brought into our hearts with our own. First of all, we think of all of those who died the evening of Kristallnacht, and those six million who died in the Holocaust. We recall those who died defending the state of Israel and all the innocent victims who have died recently and in the past year because of what's happening in the Middle East. And at this time, we also remember those whose yard sites or anniversary of whose deaths occur this week. Herbert Friedman, Yechiel Karwasser, Aliza Clement, and we add her name, to her name Eliza Karwasser and Maureen Lasher. 
And at this time, if there are names of other individuals or groups you'd like us to remember as we prepare to recite the Kaddish prayer, you may say the names aloud or in your hearts as I look across the room. Zichronam Libracha, may all of their memories be for a blessing. We turn to page 598 and rise in body or spirit to recite the Kaddish prayer. Yitkadal, Yitkadash, Ve Rabbah, Vyama, Divrach, Yerute, Vyam, Lich, Malchute, Vachai, Echon, Vyome, Echon, Vachai, Devol, Beit Yisrael, Vagawa, Ovizman, Kari, Vibru, Amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Nivarach Lilam Ome Amaya Yit Barach Vish Tavach Vit Pahar Vit Ramam Vit Naseh Vit Adar Vit Aleh Vit Alal Shme Dukudashah Barithu Laela Mim Kol Birchata Vashirata Tushvachata Venechemata The Amiran Vialma Vibru Amin Yehe Shlama Rabba Mishmaya the Chaim Alenu Bel Kol Yisrael Vibru Amen. O Se Shalom Bimramav, Huya Se Shalom Alenu Bel Kol Yisrael Vibru Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to our country, to Israel, to all Israel and all the world as we say it together. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now I'd like to call on Hal Torman, our temple treasurer and representative of the board for the announcements. Shabbat shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. So, thank you, Joel. So as, as Rabbi said, I am Hal Torman. I am representing the board tonight. Uh, a little bit out of my comfort zone. Um, Warren, I thank you so much for such a powerful and profound uh, remembrance of Kristallnacht tonight. That was very, very moving and uh, enlightening as well. So thank you so much. Um, so the announcements I am going to read, I took from the, um, the announcements that come out on Thursday. So if I miss any, I will look at anyone around the room and please fill in where I... I missed. So as was mentioned earlier, there is um, on Saturday uh, at 5 p.m. in Bedford Town Common, I believe, um, the Bedford Crystal Mark Commemoration. Um, we have a very special Shabbat service in Oneg a week from tonight uh, for a very special occasion celebrating Rabbi's 40th anniversary. So please hope to see you, many of you here next week. Um, there is a social justice meeting on Monday. Um, November 18th from 7 to 8 p.m. I really don't have any other details than that. And there was a board meeting coming up on November 20th at 7 o'clock on Zoom. So I'm sure I missed something. Um, someone want to... Uh... Thank you, Joel. Only 47 more days till Hanukkah. <laughs> Thank you. No? Okay. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Yes, thank you again, Warner, and, and, and um, this is the first time we've ever had somebody who, who, in my 40 years here, it's the first time we've ever had somebody who was able to come up and speak personally about, about Crystal Knox. So it's really something, a, a special night for all of us to be able to hear about it. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to be doing the next episode of my TV program about you. <laughs> That's coming up Wednesday, so that's why he's got a very busy week. So this is just the beginning. A lot more questions to come. And, and I wanted to thank Shalva and Chaim uh, for sponsoring the Oneg this evening. And uh, speaking of TV episodes, my, my latest episode is about Shalva and her life story and, and how she uh, uh, was born in 1942 in the woods outside of, of uh, Warsaw. Um, Nazi occupied Warsaw and made her way to DP camps and, and illegally to the uh, state of Israel before it was the state of Israel. So 
So I hope you'll watch the episode and um, I'm mentioning it tonight also because on November 22nd, she, well, I'm gonna show that the video here about her life and then she'll be able to answer questions herself. So, so, uh, so that's something to look forward to as well. And um, I feel like I'm missing other things, but I guess we'll stop there. Thank you all for being here. And, uh, and after the Social Justice Committee that's coming up now, we were waiting till after the election to see what issues we were going to have to deal with <laughs> post-election. So, so now, so now we've, we've got a lot of, on our plate. Um, so if you're able to join us for the, for the Social Justice Committee uh, meeting, please do so. And uh, so Sheldon Hyde, can you come up to lead us in the Kiddush on page 122 and 123? Please rise in body or spirit. ויחולו השמיים והארץ וכל צבאם, ויחל אלוהים ביום השביעי מלאכתו אשר עשה, וישבות ביום השביעי מכל מלאכתו אשר עשה, ויברך אלוהים את יום השביעי ויקדש אותו, כי בו שבת מכל מלאכתו אשר ברא אלוהים לעשות. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, בורי פרי הגפן. Amen. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Kedishanu B'mitzvotav, V'ratzavanu. Shabbat Kodesho, Yahweh U'v'ratzon, Inchilanu, Zikaron L'maaseh V'reishit, Ki Hu Yom Tehila, L'mikra E'kodesh. Thank <laughs> you. Hashabbat. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and now I'd like all the children to come on up for the uh, mozi. <laughs> Geffen, we need you also. He's too little. He's not too little. <laughs> he can smile. Geffen's going to hold it by himself. <laughs> Layla, come on over. Let's make it lower so Layla can hold it too. Okay. Good job. Good job. Ah, Mozi, let's We give thanks to God for bread. Our voices rise in song together as our joyful prayer is said. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. Great job. Everybody, please be seated. You guys close the doors of the ark, please. Please be seated. Okay. And for our closing song, <laughs> hope you'll join me in Hevenu Shalom Aleichem, the middle part of which has the words Sehine Matov. Words are in the book, but I think you'll be able to pick them up right away. Just Hevenu Shalom Aleichem, and then the words Sehine Matov. And, and, and after all the somber, 
parts of, of this evening. It's just, I, everybody should just look around and appreciate that we can be together here as a community to support each other, to find comfort with each other. And uh, that's what our community is all about. So, so we we'll end on a little bit of a, an upbeat note of, because we're so grateful to be in each other's midst. Right. Shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Please join us for the Oneg. Yeah.